Today I would like to ask you all a question. My question to you is, do you guys know what a black hole is? Okay, and have you ever wondered if Earth will become a black hole? Okay, sounds good, okay. Well, I'm here today to let you guys know about black holes, and I'm going to go over three main points with you guys. I'm going to go over how black holes are formed, I'm going to go over how much scientists actually know about black holes, and lastly, I'm going to go over the life of a black hole. Now, I'd like to thank NASA for creating some of the images I'll be showing you. I'd also like to thank Stephen Hawking and Roland van der Merrill for being part of the science behind this. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. So, black holes are just ordinary stars who could no longer take the pressure of being a star. So what happens is, as it runs out of nuclear fuel, it will, it will try to cave in. The reason it caves in is because there's so much mass, meaning there's so much gravity. Now, with not enough nuclear fuel to hold itself together, it wants to cave in. When it tries to cave in, a supernova occurs. Now what a supernova is, is a huge explosion. It's about roughly between 10 to 20 times the amount of energy exerted that will exert in our sun in its entire lifetime. So it's a lot of energy at once, and it's a huge explosion, lots of light, lots of stuff happening. So as this settles, what you're left with is this ball of mass. Now there's no nuclear fuel at all in this, so all it is is just what the planet, or what the star once was, with lots of gravity. Now when this formulates, there's so much gravity and such little, such little mass, or such strong mass with so much gravity that the entire thing caves in because there's no more fuel. So when this caves in, you have your black hole. Now this is a black hole here. It's not a real one. This is actually NASA's representation of one with more colors, and you can see as it sucks in a distant star. It's actually better that NASA made colors in this because black holes actually don't emit light. So that's what, uh, that's what brings us into our next topic, and that's going to be how much do scientists actually know? Because a lot of people actually like to challenge this, and maybe some of you guys do too. So what scientists know is there's two types of black holes. There's stellar mass and supermassive. Now, supermassive black holes are very large. They're about the size of an entire galaxy, so we really don't know much about these, because the closest one is somewhere between 2.5 and 3 million light years away. So stellar mass, on the other hand, are much smaller. Now, this is a stellar mass black hole. This is called Cygnus X1. This is actually the closest stellar mass black hole to Earth. This is about 8,100 light years away, so it's still very far away. Now, this is a little bit realer representation of a black hole, and let's go over a little bit about this. So, scientists know that in the center of the black hole you have your singularity. This is basically the point where once you're in, we don't know what happens to you, we don't know what goes on in there. Now, outside of the singularity you have your event horizon. This is basically what circles the inside of the black hole. Now, this is basically as you're coming in the black hole, this is your point of no return. So once you hit the event horizon, you're slowly going to be sucked in to the black hole. Now we're actually very lucky because a man named Carl Schwarzenchild uh, created a radius, and it's an equation where he can, he can tell you how far away the event horizon is from the singularity. So if we were, were able ever to, uh, to explore the depths of this, we would be able to safely explore without being sucked in. Now outside of your event horizon, you have the photon sphere. The photon sphere is much easier to see in this first picture because of, you have all the oranges and all the yellows. But here it's a little easy too. So you can see how it's starting to ring around and if you look really closely you'll notice that the light is even a little distorted. So what this part is, is where you'll have the black hole in the center and then you'll have everything slowly starting to get caught. Now what happens here is the light will slowly be pulled in as you can see some of the pulling of the light and even some mirroring effects. So this isn't the point of no return like I said, this is actually, you're still in a safe zone but you're going to start to toilet bowl into it. And that's once you hit that event horizon, that's when you're pretty much done. You, there's nothing, there's no going back from there. Now, black holes also have an axis of rotation, as you can see here, which causes the spinning and which causes the toilet bowl effect. Now, this brings us to our, uh, our third topic. And as you can see, we have lots to learn about black holes because we have not yet explored them. But one thing that scientists are pretty sure about is the lifespan of a black hole. So let's go over that a little bit. So as I said, they're just stars that can no longer handle the pressure anymore, so they create a supernova. This is the big explosion, and over weeks and months, it'll settle back down into your black hole. So you have this black hole. It starts out pretty small, about 10 to 20 times the size of our sun now. And over time, it will slowly suck in light, matter, asteroids, really anything within a 10-mile radius of the black hole itself. For years, scientists thought that this was it. They would stay here forever. They're never-ending. And that was it. But Stephen Hawking actually challenged this in the late 80s. He said that he thinks that eventually it has to it has to end. So with the use of quantum mechanics, which is something he discovered, he said that light and particle is always 
just creating and destroying itself. Now, being that it's in a black hole, nothing can be created because it's all sucked together, so it will slowly destroy itself. So over hundreds and hundreds of years, this will slowly sm die down and then completely evaporate into nothingness. Now, another thing that Stephen Hawking talks about, which is a very interesting subject, is white holes. So he says that everything that goes into a black hole must be released somewhere else. So my challenge to you guys is to, to do a little bit of research on these white holes because he thinks they have to do with time travel and taking you to a completely different universe, which is very cool if you ask me. So just a little quick recap of what we've done. Stars turn into black holes. Black holes turn into nothingness. So we have lots to learn from this. We really haven't explored much at all because they're just so far away from us. And we're discovering more stuff every day because of astronomers and scientists and telescopes and all types of stuff like this with a huge help to NASA. And uh, as the guys from Spark would say, uh, let's boldly go where no human has gone before. So I'd like to thank you guys and have a good day.